So, okay, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Yeah. Which, you know, is a huge date night, I think. Yeah. You try to get dinner reservations, it's no small thing. That's right. Um, let's say you're out tomorrow night with your partner, with your spouse, and you're not going to go to the eight dates approach. You're not going to read from the Gottman script, which we both agree is a great script. Yeah, it's a good option. Sure. If that's your style, if it's not, um, what would you tell couples to, um, how would you tell couples to approach a date tomorrow night in a way that would leave that relationship better and happier? Well, look, I mean, in general, we don't tend to be that proactive about thinking about why we're doing what we're doing. So we'll say things like, we should have a date, and then we just have a schema, this like thought that yeah. says, that means dinner and possibly a show or possibly a movie, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the key idea, I think, is to, is to be a little bit more deliberate. Like, are there particular ways in which you might want to connect with your partner? Do you want to spice things up a little bit in the passion domain? Do you want to have this greater sense of, of connection? Like we've been so busy lately that we haven't had much opportunity to catch up lately. And so the date that you plan mm -hmm. should be the date that, that is especially well suited to, under, to facilitating that particular set of goals. So I would recommend a different sort of date if you're trying to cultivate passion, maybe something like ice skating, things like really outside the box that are creative and maybe get your, you know, your heart rate up. If it's to try to connect a little bit more, maybe it's just to see a show and then talk about it over dinner. So it, it depends on what people are looking for. Yeah. And one of the things that I think I took away from your book certainly was that people should feel liberated almost, empowered to make the relationship that they're in, make the marriage that they're in work for the two of them, yeah. right? Not for how it would have needed to work 50 years ago, not how it worked for their parents or yeah. didn't work for their parents, yeah. not even how it works right now for their neighbor. That's right. Um, but that marriage doesn't necessarily have to follow these five rules or these 10 standards, that yeah. you're, you're the two people who are in it, figure out together yeah. what you want out of it. Yeah, every marriage is its own little microculture. So one of the most liberating things that happened when I wrote this book is I learned a lot from fields other than my own. So I'm a, you know, a research psychologist. I bring couples to the lab. I videotape them. I follow them over time. But I'm not a historian. I'm not even a sociologist or an anthropologist, right? So I just learned so much about how different marriage is today in the U.S. from 200 years ago in the U.S. Mm -hmm. or today in the U.S. versus the Netherlands today, for example. And, and what that taught me that I didn't really sufficiently appreciate going in is the rules of marriage didn't come down from the two tablets with the two on the two yeah. tablets from Mount Sinai. That is, yeah. it, it's changed a tremendous amount over time. It's a living, breathing social institution that that changes over the course of time. And it's easy to lament those changes, but there's a whole lot of good yeah. that comes from those changes. And and once we really internalize the lesson that says well, I grew up in this culture, this is how I always thought it was, but whoa, there's like no rules that say this is exactly the set of strictures that our particular marriage has to follow. Then you get to, I think, a, a better and more productive set of questions. Like the two of us, how do we connect yeah. particularly well? What are the things that characterize most marriages that are chronic sources of frustration to the two of us, right? And then you get to do some amount of picking and choosing about which needs and goals you're going to try to meet in this relationship. And there's a broader social network out there. There's other ways to achieve all sorts of goals. Now, we might decide there are certain things that I would never sacrifice that absolutely have to happen in this one relationship. And that's good to know. Hopefully, the two people agree on those things. Yeah. But broadly, we can live in a world where there are relatively few absolute rules and try to double down on exactly those things that are strengths of ours and figure out ways that we can stop being frustrated with each other on those exact areas that are weaknesses of ours. Mm -hmm. I agree. I like that. That sounds like a pretty good Valentine's Day.